let me welcome Laura Alonso and Maria Santa Creu, the EU Jumrai Communication Specialist from the Spanish Agency of Medicine and Medical Devices and her invited speakers. The floor is yours. Thank you, Sadika. Uh, good morning, dear guests. It is a great pleasure to be here presenting our results and closing up a great, a great project. Communication is often seen as a cross-sectoral area that supports other working areas. But it's more than that. We strongly believe that it should be programmatic. Making communication a cornerstone of all national action plans will really make an impact on the reduction of AMR. During the past three years, the communication team has had a clear general objective. We wanted to implement concrete actions at EU level, evaluate their impact, and share our, our experience with all EU member states. Now, let's see a video that summarizes EU GEMRI key results to raise awareness and promote behavior change. One of the main objectives of EU GEMRI has been to increase awareness on antimicrobial resistance, promoting the responsible use of antibiotics and encouraging healthy habits among different target audiences. After delivering a social behaviour change communication strategy based on a global approach, EU GEMRI started the design and implementation of several dynamic activities. The objective has been taking the global issue of AMR and making it meaningful to society at a local level. For doing so, the support of EU Jamrai partners designing and implementing the following raising awareness activities has been crucial. Don't Leave It Halfway is a video series of four announcements. With a touch of humour, the key message highlights the importance of following the prescription given by the healthcare professional. Available in 18 languages, the online campaign was launched to celebrate 2018 European Antibiotic Awareness Day and reached 2.7 million people in one month. The AMR webinar for journalists is an online training opportunity with clear and accurate scientific information from senior tutors with long experience in the fight against AMR. We had the privilege to have senior tutors from EU GEMRAI, ECDC, and FAO. The topics of the webinar cover the impact of AMR in human health and animal health, the ways in which Europe is facing this global health challenge, and the important role of the media. In 2018, EU GEMRAI ran a social media listening to find out what was being said about the antimicrobial resistance on the internet. One of the main conclusions was that the concept One Health was not being used. EU Jamrai designed the social media campaign One Health Butterfly Effect to raise awareness about this complex concept. The One Health approach recognizes that human health, animal health and environment are interconnected. Efforts by just one sector are not enough to tackle antimicrobial resistance. We need to design and implement policies, programs and research in which multiple sectors are working together. However, this mission can be seen as a very overwhelming task. Under the claim, everybody can flap their wings to create a One Health Butterfly effect, the audience was engaged, highlighting that we all have a role to play and that individual small changes can have large effects. Specific posts with attractive images and short key messages were created for different target audiences on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and widely disseminated with the support of our stakeholders and partners. Given the complexity of introducing antibiotic resistance in the curricular program of schools, EU Jamrai decided to develop the game app Micro Combat to facilitate that the subject is treated during school hours. Based on the card game developed by the IAS Global Research Institute, Micro Combat app is available in 19 languages 
and allows users to play remotely with people from their own environment or from anywhere in the world. Designed for 10 years old players and older, it allows introducing what types of pathogens we are exposed to, how we can prevent the spread of infectious diseases, and how much more effective preventing is than the subsequent treatment of diseases, or what antimicrobial resistance is. The magic of this game is that kids learn while playing and having fun. Firstly, they learn science, and secondly, since it is a cooperative game, they learn to be better citizens, because they experience that some threats can only be tackled by working together. EU Jamrai called to action individuals from all over the world and organized a contest to find the first global antibiotic resistance symbol, something tangible that anyone, anywhere, can make at home and wear with pride like the AIDS red ribbon. The contest generated a lot of discussion in social media, reaching over 600,000 people and got 600 applications from 44 countries. A multi-sectoral jury with members from several organizations involved in the fight against AMR selected the design of David Jungberg. Jungberg is a Swedish product designer and art director with multiple awards for his work in advertising. He now specializes in user-focused design that bridges the communication gap between science and the general public. The concept of the antibiotic resistance symbol is very simple. Two hearts slide together, turning into an X shape made of antibiotic pills. The capsules set the theme. The hearts tell us we need to care, and the band-aids tell us there is something to fix. The winning symbol was launched to celebrate the 2020 European Antibiotic Awareness Day. Um, thanks to a strong digital campaign, we reached uh, almost 2 million people in only the first two months. The campaign has had a remarkable impact on Twitter where many organizations and personalities supported the initiative, sharing pictures wearing the symbol. The response was very positive from the beginning, but this is a long distance race. There are not quick wins when promoting behavior change. Now we have to keep going and we need the support of all member states and stakeholders to popularize the use of this great symbol. In order to ensure the sustainability of these activities, we have developed a plan to integrate them within national policies. EU JAMRI has also developed a toolkit to guide countries and partners in their efforts to raise awareness of, on AMR, collecting all the results and lessons learned by the communication team. We cannot underestimate that promoting behavior change is our biggest challenge. We need to find ways to engage all sectors of society and ensure that they feel part of the solution because we all have a role to play in the fight against AMA. As explained in the video, the support of our partners and stakeholders in the design and implementation of our campaigns has been key for their success. Today, some of our stakeholders are joining this event to explain how they have supported it to Jamrai. We will start with John Kinsman, behavior change expert from ECBC. John cannot join us today, but he has kindly sent us a recorder speech. Let's watch the video. Good morning and thank you very much for the uh, chance to speak with you at your final dissemination conference. My name is John Kinsman, uh, working with ECDC. Um, and I just want to say that it has been a pleasure to uh, have the chance to work with EU JAMRAI over the last 15 months or so, since I was invited to um, support a very nice qualitative research project looking at antimicrobial stewardship programs 
in the member states and uh, it was a very nice uh, way of getting to know colleagues at EU JAMRAI and also um, the, the within the member states who were doing the work. Um, that was very nice. I also had the honor and the privilege of, of contributing to the um, AMR symbol uh, selection, which uh, was very nice. I was very happy with the result there. I think that um, one of the problems we've had with AMR has been that there is no uh, sort of internationally recognized brand or iconic feature which we can all uh, recognize. With uh, climate change, we have the polar bear or we have Greta Thunberg. With HIV AIDS, we have the red ribbon. And now we have this for AMR. And I hope that this will become something that people can really focus on uh, in the future. I think it's an incredibly important visual identity for this issue, which is definitely not going away. I think over the last year, we have um, suffered with COVID very extensively. Um, and many people have forgotten about the other pathogens, which have not actually gone to sleep and stopped their, 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 their work. Um, so it's important that we sustain the focus on AMR. And I hope that in that process, there will be the opportunity to continue with um, building behavioral insights research capacity and sustaining that and strengthening that. And also that um, qualitative research capacity will be also built there so we can look at the whys and the hows of issues to do with um, people's behavior and antimicrobial resistance. Um, so uh, I really congratulate you for, your, for all your work. Um, thank you for the opportunity to contribute and I wish you all the very, very best. Thank you. Very nice words from John. We have been very lucky to have his experience and support. And now let's listen to Mariana Borrell from the International Federation of Medical Students Association. Welcome, Mariana. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for inviting me here today. Uh, my name is Mariana, and I represent uh, the European region uh, in the IFMSA, the International Federation of Medical Students Associations. And we've been collaborating with EU JAMRAI for uh, quite some time. Uh, AMR is one of the core focus areas that the IFMSA works on, and it is the primary priority for the IFMSA's European region. And in the past years of collaboration, uh, IFA, IFMSA organized a panel discussion on AMR at the YoFest in the European Commission um, with the European Pharmaceutical Students Association and the International Veterinary Students Association as well. Uh, the panel discussed youth engagement and inclusion in fighting against AMR, the One Health approach, and the need for collaboration in acting against AMR. The IFMSA is also one of the civil society organizations to have given input in the European Commission on the One Health Action Plan on antimicrobial resistance and uh, also participated in the WHO expert consultation meeting on health workforce education and AMR uh, risk control in 2017 and continues to be committed to achieving the goals on the WHO uh, global action plan on antimicrobial resistance. Uh, with our 140 national member organizations from 130 countries, we encourage them to uh, organize national campaigns on AMR and throughout the World Antimicrobial Resistance Awareness Week held last fall, uh, IFMSA equipped its members with the tools and resources to create awareness campaigns and advocacy actions against AMR. Also, the IFMSA members adopted a policy document on AMR uh, back in 2017 and also renovated last year during um, our latest General Assembly to incorporate the newest data. Uh, IFMSA, we believe that educating healthcare providers on appropriate uh, antimicrobial use is key in reducing resistance and IFMSA has been taking act an active role in promoting awareness about antimicrobial resistant, resistance in Europe and in the world. And we have been supporting EU jam rights efforts over the past years, uh, most recently promoting the micro combat game app among our members, uh, as well as sharing um, EU jam rights campaigns to amplify their reach, especially through 
our national and local committees where we believe we uh, achieve uh, the real impact. Um, and lastly, just uh, thank you again for inviting us and we look forward to our future collaborations. Thank you, Mariana. You represent the future healthcare workforce. It's extremely important to have you on board. Uh, okay, we will continue with Anders Beres from the Joint Programming Initiative on Antimicrobial Resistance. Hi, Anders. Welcome. Uh, please, you can proceed with your presentation. Thank you, Laura. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, we have much work to do together and we have done much as well. Um, um, since you know, uh, JPA Marius, uh, we have much in common. Uh, JPA Marius is a member based organization. We have 28 countries uh, together with us and we uh, have a focus on coordinating uh, research uh, funding and uh, research uh, priorities on a global scale. Uh, and we're much happy to be collaborating with you. Uh, coming up soon is a virtual workshop on uh, AMR surveillance uh, research and its impact on policymaking, uh, 23rd of February, uh, where we engage mm -hmm. in key stakeholders uh, together. Uh, and we're very much looking forward to do that together with you, continuing the work to uh bring awareness and uh, more uh, beyond us also you've been inspiring us i think uh throughout the years uh with the videos and all, all the engagement work you've done uh we've been participating contributing to the the uh, things you've been doing uh sharing information uh inspiration activation i think um you have made us better uh, because you have inspired us Um, and we're continuing to do that work together as well. Uh, is it enough? Uh, well, we have the grand challenge to curb AMR on a global scale. Uh, we are not finished with the work we're doing together. Um, the only thing we need is to keep collaborating, uh, keep listening, uh, keep engaging. Uh, but I firmly believe that we are better together. Uh, so thank you for everything you've done, and I look forward to work together with you uh, for the coming weeks and the future. Thank you, Anders. Yes, we, indeed, we are stronger together. Now it is the turn of this Poenia Yatridu from the European Platform for the Responsible Use of Medicine in Animals. This Poenia, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Maria, and uh, thank you for this invitation on behalf of EP Roma, which I said is the European platform for the responsible use of medicines in animals. We are a multi-stakeholder group bringing together veterinarians, farmers, the animal health industry, feed manufacturers and national initiatives. Ipiruma has been raising awareness on the need for responsible use of all medicines for more than 15 years. We enthusiastically joined this action since the beginning as we share the same objectives, that is to facilitate one health best practices exchange against IMR and to contribute to the discussion among policymakers. We joined initially at the uh, working package seven, which was working on appropriate use of antimicrobials in humans and animals, where we contributed to the collection of field data from farmers and veterinarians in two surveys. One in 2018, searching to identify best practices in the responsible use of veterinary antibiotics at national level, and one next year regarding implementation of antimicrobial stewardship programs. Ipiruma also contributed to the work of the Working Package 4 with input on the priorities for the joint action. There, the animal health sector highlighted the need for a true One Health approach to ensure sustainability of the outcomes. During these three and a half years, we have been following and spreading the EU GMRA campaigns, such as the One Health Butterfly Effect, the uh, campaign Don't Leave It Halfway, and the IMR Symbol Contest. 
We contributed to all previous annual discussions, like we do today, by highlighting the contribution of the animal health sector to responsible use of medicines and One Health, a contribution that has led to the decrease of antibiotic sales in food-producing animals by 34% over the past 10 years. Two weeks ago, Ipiruma has endorsed the recommendation developed in collaboration with EU GIAMRE, calling for the development of core competencies on antimicrobial stewardship for farmers, and we will continue to share the outcomes of this joint action via our channels. Thank you again for being part of this uh, big project. Thank you, thank you, Svina. We finished with Jay Tassi from the communication team of the One Health European Joint Programme. Great supporters of EU Jam right from the very beginning and authors of the greatest pictures wearing the antibiotic resistance symbol. I encourage you to check it in social media. <laughs> thank you for joining us, Jay, please. Thank you very much, Laura. So good morning. Um, and thank you for inviting us today. Um, I'm Jay Passy, and I'm a member of the One Health European Joint Programme Communications Team. We are a consortium of 37 partners across 19 countries in the EU with a One Health focus on foodborne zoonosis, antimicrobial resistance and emerging threats. EU JAMRI and the One Health EJP have had a strong relationship for many years and representatives of our management teams and communication teams have worked closely on lots of dissemination activities. We have also become valued members of each other's stakeholder committees. A key way that we have supported EU JAMRAI is through our digital platforms. Over the years, there have been several social media campaigns we have collaborated on, including One Health Day, European Antibiotic Awareness Day and World Antibiotic Awareness Week. We have also supported social media campaigns led by EU JAMRAI, including the One Health Butterfly Effect, uh, the Don't Leave It Halfway social media campaign and the antibiotic awareness symbol. We were able to get many of our consortium members to wear the symbol from our project management team right down to our PhD students. Um, and as Laura mentioned, we were also able to bake and knit the symbol. The possibilities were endless and we were able to sh show that um, and that reflected the vision of um, EU JAMRAI when they uh, started up this campaign. Um, and of course, it's so nice to see so many people wearing the symbol today. We were kindly asked to judge the entries of the competition, uh, which uh, for me personally was an honour, um, and each and every symbol was cleverly considered and well executed, and the UJAMRA were able to open up the creative side of scientists, which is always welcomed. More recently, we have shared the news of the Microcombat app with our followers and our consortium members on Twitter and LinkedIn, and that's been very well received and widely shared. Additionally, we plan to use our website as a hub for some of their policy briefs to support the dissemination and promote the sustainability of EU JAMRAI's work over the last three and a half years. We've also supported EU JAMRAI through our newsletters and bulletins, and we've been able to share their social media campaigns and also any events and interesting news from their consortium, which have been of interest to, to all of our members. We will, of course, continue to share many of these initiatives in the coming months and years to ensure that EU JAMRAI's legacy lives on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jade. Uh, before we continue, we would like to remind you that all lessons learned by the communication team are summarized on a toolkit for communication and behavior change on AMR that is available in our website. This toolkit is the best way that we have found to make all these activities available to EU national action plans and scale up their impact. Now we are going to start in a few minutes with the round table. And I'm going to briefly start introducing our following speakers. We are delighted to welcome Charles Price from DG Santé, Danilo Fogong from WHO, Dominique Monet from ECDC, Sasha Marchand from the European Public Health Alliance, and Jens de Gret from the European Union of Science Journalists Association. Welcome all. So our first question is for Dominique and Danilo. 
every year the ad and the World Antibiotic Awareness Week engage different target audiences in the fight against antibiotic resistance. You support countries providing evidence and producing high quality communication materials and key messages. In your opinion, what else needs to be done to ensure that countries benefit from the big communication efforts done by ECDC and WHO? Thank you. you want to start, Dominique? I can, oh, well. I can start. Good morning. Um, we're in the times of, of COVID. So I've been reading lately and reading books. And to my surprise, it's already in the 1950s and 60s. We were talking about bacterial resistance rather than AMR. We we're talking about rational use or prudent use rather than antimicrobial stewardship. And the issues of raising awareness of the general public and, and health professionals were already mentioned. The term Superberg dates back to 1966. In some European countries, I'm talking about Czechoslovakia at the time and also Denmark and Sweden, the efforts can be traced as far back as 1960, 1970s. In the EU, you can see efforts in the late 1990s and early 2000s with a first strategy published in 2001 and already in one health perspective. And all this has accelerated during the past decade and the many initiatives that were reported in, in this session already illustrate this point. So what do we need to do? Uh, we need to continue. Obviously, we've not done enough. It's a snowball effect. We start seeing uh, in uh, an increasing number of member states that are reporting data to ECC and are showing a decrease in antimicrobial consumption and the first sign of a possible effect on antimicrobial resistance. So let's continue. And I think one thing done enough is to invest in raising awareness of antimicrobial resistance and antibiotics among school children and young adults and about antibiotics and also hygiene and possibly other public health issues. Uh, the initiative of a macro combat uh, uh, cards and, uh, and uh, app is certainly a good one. There's also the eBug program. And uh, I would say we, we need to save eBug. We need to find a home for eBug and we need to continue with eBug. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. And I, I will I will pick up where uh, where Dominique left off. And, and you're absolutely right. It's it's been it's been debated and brought up many times over the past uh, many years. I think the first um, meeting minutes I found in WHO was uh, a meeting in 1971 on the topic. And then you can actually you can see how slow this uh, this has been uh, developing in terms of of local and global awareness. Um, and there's there's been uh, I think the eu and the eu member states have been really up on the forefront of of pushing the agenda and and doing something about it actually um so a little bit later who also came on board for to to get the rest of the region engaged and since 2014 we've been encouraging countries to share awareness campaign plans with us and we provided them with very small grants to help them realize those plans because especially in countries that had very little experience in setting up amr campaigns Usually just the lack of funds was a major barrier to get even started on the smallest events. Um, and what we've seen is that actually a lot can be done with a little. And uh, as the years went by, we see more and more innovation also in these countries that are relatively new to awareness campaigns and, uh, and finding ways to complete the materials that ECDC and us have provided to them. So I think we see an increased ownership of the awareness day and the awareness week. And I think moving forward, we need to look beyond one day or one week per year and find ways to support countries to raise awareness all year round. And I think if anything we've learned from COVID-19 is that people can actually change behavior once they realize the gravity of the situation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Charles. Uh, thank you, Danilo and Dominique. The following question goes to Charles. Countries often are not having enough resources to make communication a cornerstone of their national action plans. From the policy making point of view, what else could be done at EU level to support countries in their communication efforts? 
Thank you very much, Maria. Uh, good morning and good morning to everybody on the call. And can I just start by saying how wonderful it is to hear of the achievements of the Jamrai and actually also your achievements on communication. You know, with all the stakeholders on the call, with the new symbol, with the way that you're reaching out to people all over Europe, it's fantastic. So the first answer to your question, I think we need to have more projects like Jam Rye. And we can hopefully look at our new EU for Health programme and see how we can support this effort and build on your achievements. Of course, the EU's got a couple of things that it uh, must do in its action plan. We've said that we'll help support member states to understand better public awareness on this issue through Eurobarometers. And so we will carry on doing that. And we shouldn't, uh, we, sh we should use those resources. But I'd also like to point to the ECDC's uh, Eurobarometer for professionals. It's not just reaching out to the public, but reaching out to our stakeholders in the veterinary and the medical stakeholders who then have an enormous influence with their clients. And the ECDC survey showed that many of the professionals actually could do with some more support to help them communicate the message. And finally, on World Antibiotic Awareness Week, colleagues were just talking about that. Again, I would like to see us looking at EU for Health to see if we could do more to support maybe common materials which could be then taken forward uh, by member states and national languages to, to reach out during that whole week uh, using the social media, using more effectively and using television and other public awareness tools. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charles, for your kind words and for being always there supporting us. Uh, actually, yes, let's let's hope that we can have more projects like this to, to keep the, the collective effort up. Um, so now the next question is for Sasha. Uh, Sasha, EPA's goal for 2020 was to make sure that the public health objectives and the reduction of health inequalities were mainstreamed through all relevant EU policies and programs. Which are your proposals to get the EMR become mainstream, not only for policymakers, but also for the population? Yeah, thank you for the question and good morning to everyone. I hope you can hear me all right and that I'm not just a dark shape. I'm trying to get the light right, but somehow. It's okay. <laughs> not, um, so the European Public Health Alliance, first of all, um, is a large uh, public health umbrella organization. So we're not a patient organization. We're not a healthcare professional uh, lobby. We're not uh, only representing the uh, interests of vulnerable groups, but it's really the diversity of the public health uh, community. And I think that puts us in an interesting uh, position to um, disseminate the results of the GEMRI, both vis-a-vis uh, -vis policymakers, and that obviously combined with our own uh, activities in the policy sphere. Um, just to highlight a couple of them, the most important ones for the last couple of years have been the coordination of the AMR stakeholder network, which um, was originally created under the European Health Policy Platform, but then became its own um, sort of stakeholder network, really bringing together a much wider uh, selection of stakeholders, civil society led, uh, which has created its own roadmap. And then in addition to this, we're also working very closely with the MEP Fight AMR uh, interest group as uh, co-coordinators of, of that group. So stakeholder network and MEP interest group are closely linked. In terms of communication, uh, general public versus policymakers, I think the general public needs to be always uh, uh, addressed because I think every generation needs to learn about the dangers of DMR, AMR um, anew. So while we are now creating a lot more awareness, the next generation will need exactly the same, just how it is when it comes to the transmission of sexually transmitted diseases or communicable diseases, for example. And I think this, this uh, symbol is a great thing because it, it makes things just a little bit more visible and understandable than just talking about statistics. The other thing I want to say is I think that the pandemic crisis, well, unfortunately, but fortunately in this context, it has really raised awareness of um, individual responsibility as well, and also the benefits of very simple actions 
So it's raised our awareness of hand hygiene, for example, um, at the hospital setting of infection prevention and control measures and these kinds of things. And I think it's hugely important um, in the future if we want to talk about AMR, because I felt that temporarily and for very good reasons, the AMR discussion was a little bit sidelined. And now that awareness has been raised again. And if John Ryan said it twice recently in public settings, you know, like the AMR crisis is just around the corner. So we really need to wake up and take action. Um, and perhaps the final point in terms of mainstreaming this into the conversation, EFA being so broad, we, we obviously want to help the Commission with the implementation, not only of the EU for Health strategy itself, but also with a lot of the flagship um, priorities and initiatives, whether it's Europe's Beating Cancer Plan, um, the farm to fork strategy, the pharmaceutical strategy, um, actions on health and equalities and AMR, the AMR angle can be brought into all of these conversations and must be brought into all of these conversations. And I think that's where hopefully we can, we can play a really useful role in this. And we look forward to also hosting all of your useful documents on our website. Thank you very much, Jens. Um, now uh, we are going to follow with Jens. Sasha, thank you very much. Jens, what could the general media do to convey scientific information on AMR more effectively and comprehensively to the public? Oh, thank you for inviting me. And, uh, and I can tell you there's a lot to do. Um, first of all, um, if if you want to uh, communicate complex messages, you have to address the practitioners. And, and I also think that, uh, that uh, you have to find out which are the journalists and which part of the press will be the best part to communicate uh, these relatively complex messages. I also think that there are some general messages which are important, but in order to make changes uh, you have you have to also explain why is antibiotic resistance resistance uh, important and um, after doing that i would also say uh, you need to have a very uh, national based um, communication so you are aware that that you cannot give the same messages in Denmark as you can in Sweden, because uh, they will look different at, um, at the uh, information in Sweden than they look in Denmark. And the problems are different. For example, in my country, we have a huge uh, production of uh, livestock and, and pigs. I think there's about five times more pigs in my country than there are humans. And, and they use enormous amount of antibiotic. Uh, and therefore, there's a lot to do uh, in order to inform uh, the press and also inform the stakeholders uh, which are organizing uh, the journalists and the press. Uh, I think this is a very important issue. And I can also say that there's a lot of interest in, uh, in covering the topic. Whenever I have uh, put articles or raised uh, issues about antibiotic resistance, uh, and, and I was running actually uh, four seminars last year on that topic, that has been a lot of interest in this. So, um, so I think uh, it's, it's uh, kicking in open doors, uh, but you also have to be specific and be aware that it's uh, different messages you should communicate in different countries and to different stakeholders. So it's, uh, I would say, it's a very important topic to communicate, but you also have to be aware of the complexity of both the topic itself, but also in communicating it. I hope I hope that gave you an, an impression of um, of how I I see it and um, and how um, how I think that um, that you can address the issue uh, in a multi stakeholder multi uh, country area as as we had here in in, in Europe. 
Yes, definitely. We have a global challenge, but uh, we have to adapt the, the messages uh, to the local context uh, because you know realities are very different across the different countries. Um, uh, dear round table members, uh, we had more questions prepared. We will be here longer uh, uh, chatting with you, but unfortunately we are a little bit late. We are running late and I think that we have to, to, to close uh, this session and, and move to the next one. Uh, thank you so much uh, for, for your participation and for the support that you have given us along the life of EU Jamrai. Uh, hoping to see you soon. And I'm very pleased to give the floor to Charles Price for the closing remarks from the DG Sante at the European Commission. Mr. Price, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Marielle. And thank you to everybody who's here today on the call and who's witnessed, I think, what's been the amazing achievements of the EU Jamrai and they've been summarized excellently just now by Celine Pulsini but also the inspiring commitments for the future uh, that we've just heard from Marie-Cécile Ploy. So I really would like participants to go away with those inspiring words from Cecile, Mary Cecile and Celine, rather than to listen to very much uh, from me, from the European Commission. But I did want to just share with you a couple of thoughts. So I'm going to attempt to share my so screen. Some of you may remember this. Some of you may not may wish to even forget it. It was taken on the 30th of September 2016 in Luxembourg and it's the preparatory meeting for EU Jamrai. And you can't of course see the notice board there but I took a copy for you and it's a very busy slide as you can see and I think what it serves to remind us is that there was an enormous amount of work. There was an enormous amount of work which took place right at the beginning, which generated words, which generated numbers, which generated commitments, which generated ideas. And that now, four and a half years later, we've, through your efforts, through the enormous commitment that you've shown and through the skills and expertise that you've brought to Jamrai, you've turned words and ideas and commitments to concrete action. So on behalf of the European Commission, I want to say thank you. Thank you, EU Jamrai. Thank you for delivering the amazing things that you've delivered. I think we're back now on the, uh, the chat. But Mary Cecile mentioned, I think, uh, about value for money. And I certainly agree with you, Mary Cecile, that for me, Jamrai's delivered value for money. We invested, the Commission invested, citizens' money, four million euros of citizens' money, and your member states invested another nearly three million in this. And that, for us in the Commission, that represented about a third of the whole budget for the public health action on AMR in the last seven years. So there was a lot riding on our investment. And I think for me, what you've demonstrated 
over the last three and a half years, but more what you've demonstrated in the last two days now is how much was achieved by actually so little money. Because if you see how much money that was per EU citizen, it's about one and a half cents per person. Uh, one and a half cents, folks. The average expenditure on health care for an EU citizen is over 2,000 euros a year. A lot of that goes on treating infections. A big chunk goes on the use of antibiotics. And what you've demonstrated is that with a very small amount of money and your skill and energy, you've been able to mobilise action at member state level, at local level, in people's minds and achieve results. And you've left us also with a legacy of tools, ideas and challenges to take forward. And may I say about that legacy, I've worked at the Commission now for nearly 16 years and I've worked on a lot of projects. But I've never seen a project take so seriously the requirement that the Commission puts on the beneficiaries to plan and commit to sustainability and dissemination and the future. So I would like to give us very special thanks to all the partners, but particularly to France, to INSERM, for your commitment to that, which I think you started right at the beginning and still carries on. Now, the European Court of Auditors, of course, are the people who really judge value for money. <laughs> and they looked at JAMRAI briefly when they reviewed the EU action on AMR, and they said, we found that the EU funded joint action on antimicrobial resistance JAMRAI facilitated co cooperation between member states. But ja JAMRAI's overall success will depend on actions subsequently taken by member states to actually implement the solutions developed by the work packages. And I think, though they mentioned, of course, the action by member states, clearly those actions are also, and those responsibilities are also by the EU institutions and by the Commission. We take very seriously your request to us. We take very seriously what you've asked for in terms of the follow-up actions. And we look forward to working together with you to really make the outputs of, joint, of, the joint, of EU JAMRAI count in the months and years ahead for the benefit of the EU citizens, for their health, for the benefit actually also of the, of the animals and the agriculture in the EU. And that because we're talking also about the future and the need to include the environment in that, let's not forget that what we're talking about here is the sustainable use and the efficient use of our resources, which is a fundamental part of our overall sustainability agenda. So I think there's a lot of work more to be done and there's an even bigger picture to be addressed with this and we look forward to working with you partners uh, on that agenda in the years to come. Thank you.